perspective is a big breakthrough, which I will get to in just a moment. I want to first acknowledge uh, some, because I'm not going to be able to acknowledge everyone who's here, but we're joined today by Cincinnati City Council Member David Mann, by former state senator and current African American uh, Chamber of Commerce President Eric Kearney, by former mayor of the city of Cincinnati Mark Mallory, uh, Julie Sellers, the president of the Cincinnati Federation of Teachers, had a personnel meeting to attend, but Jane Simon is here representing CFT. Uh, AFL-CIO President Pete McClendon is with us. Greater Cincinnati Building Trades President uh, Fred Lampy, another member of that executive team from the Plumbers and Pipefitters, Bill Fraley, Rick Fisher, Justin Phillips from the Laborers, Rick Fisher with IBW, Hispanic Chamber of Commerce President Alfonso Corneo, uh, Cincinnati USA Regional Chamber President Jill Meyer, West End Community Council President Keith Blake, and most important, you know, a, the heart and soul of this community, so many members of the West End and our little, little senators as well. Give the little senators a round of applause. For... <laughs> we come together at a time when Cincinnati is on the move, creating vitality in our urban core and spreading that vitality to other parts of our city. Behind this renaissance is an attitude an attitude that says, we don't pass on opportunity, we seize opportunity. It's an attitude that says, we didn't get Amazon, okay, then let's make our pool of talent deeper, let's make our vibrancy brighter, let's make our narrative stronger. We're capable of that. We are capable of coming together to do big things. At a personal level, I am a Cincinnati guy, I cheer for my hometown, I care about our neighborhoods, I've devoted my life so far to the betterment of our city, and this is the com community where my wife and I will be raising our family. The point being, I don't make big decisions lightly, and I don't make big decisions without an enormous amount of listening and doing my homework. When you serve in elected office, as many of us up here have, the question we should be asking ourselves is the most people. No doubt, governing can be messy, and it's usually the case that there's no such thing as the perfect legislation or the perfect deal or the perfect outcome. We're forced to make choices. Sometimes those choices are binary and often they're difficult. I and the people standing here today have worked very hard to help craft a deal that we believe brings real value and real benefit to the city we love and to the people we represent. In the agreement that Councilmember Mann and I are proposing, and which FC Cincinnati has agreed to and has been shaped by so many other stakeholders, those community benefits and that added value will include the following. $25 million plus in new money over the life of this agreement will go to Cincinnati Public Schools. This was a non-negotiable and a game changer for me, and I'm proud that I've gotten that commitment, which will also be legally binding, that FC Cincinnati is going to This is a big win for kids and for teachers, and $22 million in new money will be spent with women-owned businesses. This is a big win for making sure that we're building an inclusive local economy for the half of our community who are women. $16 million plus will be added to workers' wages because by being in Ohio, this, po this project will pay prevailing wage, not to mention 1,870 jobs during construction. I mentioned many of our brothers and sisters in the building and construction trades are here with us today, and this, is, and this part of the plan is a big win for workers. $15 million, $15 million in new quality affordable housing will be brought online, led by a private developer in partnership with the city, and where the community will be empowered around things like scale, design, and aesthetic of that affordable housing. This commitment reflects our understanding about urgent housing needs in the community and our sincere desire to do right by the people who currently call the West End home. While it's true that no homes are being demolished and no one is being displaced as a result of the construction, that alone is not enough. Councilmember Denard has already been amplifying the conversation around the issues of indirect displacement and evictions, and we're going to be working on more tools and legislation to further safeguard both homeowners and renters. $100,000 annually in new money directly from FC Cincinnati will go to various West End organizations, such as the Little Senators Youth Sports, 
the creation of a West End Athletic Association, a Mortar West End Entrepreneurship Program, and the Q Kids Dance Group, among others. This annual $100,000 commitment will be part of the CBA, and we'll also, we'll also plan on making it a binding part of the development agreement for this deal. This is a win for everything from youth recreation to minority entrepreneurship to after school programming. Should also mention that the $10 million for a new Stargell is of course part of this deal as well. In addition to all the significant investment that I just outlined, yes, there will still be a community benefits agreement covering everything from light to noise to litter to traffic to safety. This agreement will codify what it means to be a good neighbor and because of its importance, we're not gonna rush it. City Council will be the official convener in the weeks and months ahead to get the details right for how the neighborhood and this development can move forward in a way that is truly synergistic. Furthermore, an official community advisory council for this stadium development will be established to walk with FC Cincinnati and with the city through each step of this process. Now, some of you might have noticed that I haven't said much about soccer yet. I know there are some fans here. Uh, yes, I am a fan. Yes, I look forward to being at the home opener tomorrow. And yes, I think FC has been a lightning bolt of positive energy for our city. But frankly, I believe this announcement today is bigger than soccer. It's about leveraging this opportunity to touch people's lives in a meaningful and positive way. I also want to be the first to acknowledge that the West End deserves better than the history that it's lived through. While I wasn't even alive yet for much of that history, and while I certainly wasn't on council, I promise I take it seriously. We have an opportunity to do better, and we will do better. Today is about working to bring resolution to one big decision, but the broader process of doing right by the West End is far from over. Indeed, it's one that is just beginning, and it's not a process that any of us up here are gonna step away from. There must be, and there will be accountability every step of the way. I'd be remiss if I didn't say that as we move forward, I hope our city, both its leaders and its people will feel the same sense of urgency about poverty and education and wages as we have about this stadium. Now I've been in public service long enough, not quite as long as some of the folks up here, but long enough to know that some will second guess the path that we're going down. That's okay, it comes with the territory. I've had some hard conversations with people I respect greatly, who I know care deeply about the city and who disagree with where I've landed on this issue. Some of those people are my colleagues and some are my friends. But I don't want us to indulge in untrue characterizations. Senator Eric Kearney doesn't want to hurt businesses in the West End. He wakes up every day thinking about how he can help them. Mayor Mark Mallory doesn't want to see residents displaced. His own family has called this neighborhood home for generations. President Julie Sellers and Jane Simon, they don't want students' lives to be disrupted. She and her fellow teachers have devoted their careers to lifting children up. What's important to me is being clear about the facts and being clear about the reality of the decision we face. What will happen if instead of seizing this opportunity, we let it pass us by and go across the river to Kentucky? Rather than Cincinnati public schools and teachers getting $25 million plus, they will get zero. And even more, we risk undermining future school levies by sending taxpayers the signal that it was okay to pass on a new revenue stream of tens of millions of dollars. Rather than minority and women-owned businesses getting more than $50 million, less of that will go to local MBEs and WBEs. Rather than workers earning prevailing wage, they will be denied that fair compensation and will take home $16 million less, which is less money to provide for their families and to cycle back through our local economy. Rather than introducing $15 million in new quality affordable housing, of course we'll still try to pursue that outcome, but we'll be starting from scratch rather than having a deal ready to go. And rather than $100,000 from FC going every year directly into awesome West End organizations, that money will go elsewhere. I am glad that we have forged a plan for FC Cincinnati to call Cincinnati home, and following today's announcement, I believe they will soon be doing so as a major league soccer team. But today, I'm even more proud of the good I know we can do for children and families and teachers and workers and minority businesses and those who are underserved. We are a can-do city. Let me say again, we don't pass on opportunity, 
we seize opportunity. It is time for us to turn a corner away from an era of heads I win, tails you lose, and instead embrace a future where we can win together. Thank you very much.